الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who believe, fear Allah, as he should be feared, and they not accept on the state of Islam, for may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, be so upon us, the gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma ameena ya rabbal alameen. Amma ba'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, ba'd a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, yuridu Allahu li yubayyina lakum wa yahdiyakum sunan al-lazina min qablikum wa yatub alaykum wa Allahu alimun hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to clarify for you all the matters of your deen, subhanahu, and to وَيُبَيِّنْ لَكُمْ وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ and He guide you to the way of the generation of the nation before you to give you the principle which make them to be successful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestow upon you His bounty by accepting your repentance. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And Allah the all-knowing and the all-wise. Then the ayat continue, قال, وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ And Allah wills to accept your repentance, to have His grace upon you. وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا And those who follow the desires, those who follow their whims, those who follow their lusts, their will, their intention, their plan, their work is to deviate you completely from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَيْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will is to lighten on you your burden. Indeed, قَالَ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ And the humanity had been created weak. In this ayat of Surah An-Nisa, as you can see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to shower you with his mercy, will to accept his, your repentance, Allah's will to guide you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you are weak, he's the one who created you. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with us based on our natural state, based on our weakness, based on our vulnerability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful to us to bestow upon us the gift of the guidance and guide us to fulfill or to implement the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that there's no hardship in it, in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. This ayat, dear brother, respect to sister, as you can see, defining the ubudiyya, the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes is based his will to bestow upon us all these types of gifts. A gift of gifts, if you can say, if you put them in few terms, the gift that the base of this deen made it to be the ease, that the content and the fortress in this deen made it to be the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and His grace and bounty make, made it subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in accepting our repentance. And this is, if you just reflect on it, you find how it's building in the life and the soul of the believer that spirit of hope, that spirit of having one to rely on, that spirit of subhanAllah, of optimism. And this is a nature and a spirit in the whole deen of the Islam. However, when we look at the other side, which those who follow us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, وَالَّذِينَ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ Those who are followed their desire, they want to deviate you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the awliya of the shaitan, those who are follow the way of the shaitan. However, in what I have said already, those are some of the characteristic of the meaning of wala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in many ayat of the Quran, Allah waliyu ladina amanu. Allah is the guardian, is the friend, is the helper, uh, he's the, 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 the one who takes care of the believers. 
However, the shaitan is the same thing for the disbeliever. But in this particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, and those disbelieve want to mislead you, want to lead you astray. So those who follow the desires. And this is very subhanAllah profound because you find the Muslim who's far from the practicing of the deen of Islam, he's really also following the desire. So the desire makes someone subhanAllah to be in a way deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, even, you know, uh, despite the fact that the person is a believer. Uh, but when you think about it, when you think about it, you say one of the instructions of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the believer. Allah speaks to the believer to use the spirit of optimism, to use the spirit of hope in your relation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stand firm and counter back and oppose and defend yourself from the going astray by the will or the intention of those who follow the desire. Now, if someone will ask and say, is that desire like, you know, just entertaining and showbiz and all this? It's not that. It's really dangerous and it's really threatening. Because what is the most notable impact, negative impact of following the desires? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, following the desire, it's not like just to quench one desire to fulfill some, some you know, lust. It's not about that. This desire here are a creed, a system of belief. A way of life. So this is becomes totally different than you think in someone committing a sin and coming running back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this perspective, the worst or the most negative impact or the worst negative impact of following the desire and make the desire to be creed as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this ayah is the corruption of the inner nature, is the corruption of the fitrah. The fitrah, subhanAllah, is altered. The fitrah is corrupted. When the fitrah is corrupted, simply, it leads to one thing. The corruption of the whole universe. It's a fact. It's a reality. In fact, when someone has the void, that he does not follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he made out of his system of belief this desire, and he make it a way of life, what is going to happen? They're going to invent a new reality. This new reality who's given them the element of their, you know, define the way how they want to live this way of life. And this is they're going to be calling the truth. And based on this truth, on based what they claim to be truth, they're going to have Allah to lead people astray. Maybe some of them they do not know. But the fact that they are embarking themselves in that level on that side, so are people as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuridu Allah wa yuridu ladina yattabi'una shahawati an tamilu maylan azim. Now, when I said the corruption of the fitrah leads to the corruption of the universe, this is an ayah in the Quran. قَالَ وَلَوْ اتَّبَعَ الْحَقُّ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ لَفَسَدَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِمْ If the truth follow their wings, then the whole heaven and the earth, they go corrupt. And whatever in it, whatever in it, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ordered His Prophet sallam, and ordered us to make stand ourselves and to turn our face to the deen of Allah that He made it to be based on the inner nature, on the fitrah. It is the fitrah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The natural disposition upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his creation. So all of us, we've been created with this fitrah, with this fitrah, and this natural disposition, which is rhymes and come into coherence with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you find like, you know, explore your potential, develop yourself, cleanse yourself, and you let yourself to rise to high ranks. Ranks are being the right as vice president. Ranks are being the one who's correct in the universe. Ranks that will be able to contribute in the well-being of this universe. However, when this fitra is corrupt, when this fitra is corrupted, what is going to happen? It's going to invent people, they're going to invent a new ideology. And they make it be the system of life. And this system of life is going to generate action. And this action is going to corrupt everything. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same surah, فَيَكِمْ وَجَّكَ الْدِّينِ حَنِيفَةً فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلًا لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ There is no uh, uh, alteration in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Before that, what he said, Allah qala, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Mischief have appeared in the land and the sea. As you can see it. As you can see it. You can read it, report. And if you want to just explore, you see how much mischief. If you just you see on the environment and all of it, subhanAllah, of what have people done. What they have people, they, they done with their own doing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيُذِيقَهُمْ Allah is going to taste them some of the trials, some of the punishment, you know, because of what they have done, in order maybe that they come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, dear brother, respect sister, we are in a society and in a world, it's not anymore to call people about Islam. It's not anymore to focus on calling to the guidance. We have a deeper problem. Becomes, subhanAllah, something that's crucial, something that is really define our future, which is to protect your fitr, to protect your inner nature. So it's beyond the guidance, it's beyond you find, subhanAllah, someone, he's Muslim and everything, but if he has a corrupted fitra, he has a corrupted perception, then he will be receiving what is falsehood, can see it as the truth. And when people, subhanAllah, they go, far astray and they want to make some of the major sins or most of the major sins to be natural in the human being that is really is the corruption of the fitra who had people to think and include it or introduce it as a philosophical essays to tell you that these things that the inclination to be someone else or to have another gender is something innate is not innate لا تبديل لخلق الله because of the corruption of the fitrah, that the legacy after with, it becomes corruption even of the nature of the things and the nature of the creation. Therefore, when you think about it, it is really crucial for us. Because when you look around us, people, subhanAllah, the way they, they, they gone, in a way, subhanAllah, to change the creation of Allah, to look at it as something that they worthy advocating for. To uh, look at it as something that worthy to celebrate it. And it is, subhanAllah, conflicting and fighting against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to cancel fully, completely the moral standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined. Therefore, as a believer, as a believer, not anymore about Islam, which is who you are, but it's like defending first your fitrah, your inner nature. When you find, subhanAllah, today the debate, you know, a few years ago, it was the debate about the marriage between, you know, the same gender, advocating fiercely. And then it becomes, subhanAllah, about the genders. Then when you think about it, subhanAllah, these people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they forget who they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forget them. Because if someone does not have that inner nature, that inner nature corrupted, is lost. He does not have anything to hold on. He does not have anything to refer to. He does not have a, an access that is, you know, strong and firm to pivot around it. There is nothing. So therefore, people, subhanAllah, when they hit the hurdle of the boredom, they want to do something else. As Ibn Khaldun, rahimahullah ta'ala said, is like, you know, extremism in the luxury excessiveness will lead to change and alter the, the nature of the human being. And this is how the collapse and the fall of the civilization comes. So we are witnessing a time where the collapse of civilization we're going to be witnessing soon or later but it has all the ingredient of the decadence of the society. And a Muslim need to stand here is either to contribute to help and save or to protect himself and herself by protecting their fitrah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith قال يولد المولود على الفطرة Every newborn is born on the inner nature. The inner nature that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala created in us. The inner nature that it had that ingredient that you were somewhere in the knowledge of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala with Adam and the whole creation witnessing that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is the one as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. So this is your inner nature. This is your inner nature. The Prophet ﷺ قال فأباه يهودانه أو ينصرانه أو يمجسانه His parents, they're going to make him Jew or Christian or Magian, worshipper of the fire. But he didn't say his parents make them Muslim. 
Why? Because they're born Muslim. They're born in the nature of Islam. The nature that Allah created. Allah created, set in it already those setting of the essence of the nature to be worshipper Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of you, you know that. But here, there is a deduction from this hadith making that the most important, important task for the believer is to preserve and safeguard that fitr. So it's not because any other parents who follow other, you know, adhere to other religion, it's normal that they take their kids, you know, in their way because this is their forefather they're following. But you, you have to be aware because you have a gift and you're going to preserve the fitrah of this newborn. And you cannot preserve the fitrah of this newborn if you do not care about your own fitrah. That's why it becomes a necessity in today's world to really stand and stand in the way of yourself. Stand with the strength of your soul. Stand with your true and sincere adherence to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we do that? If the ayat that I have mentioned, which is give us really the spirit of strength, the spirit of mind. Can you imagine someone boasting and showing off with the major sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it haram in all his books and mainly in the book of the Quran? Boasting. Do you know that boasting with the sin is greater than the sin itself? Do you know committing a major sin in hiding, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you, come back. But if you come out, in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu said, a person committed a sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered him. However, he came in the morning and bragging about his sin. He said what he has done is worse than the sin, is greater than the sin that he has done. And then to people to make a whole month of celebration, fighting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you believer, you have to stand. Stand first for yourself. Stand for yourself by bringing into yourself the spirit of optimism, the spirit of hope that Allah is with you. That Allah who shower you with his grace is going to give you strong personality. Is going to give you that firmness that you stand for the sake of Allah. You cannot in any way alter yourself or your fitrah. You cannot in any way incline to anybody else because you're going to lose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who the one alladhi yuridu ayyatuba alaykum. Who are the one you read and you khafif ankum. You read and you begin alakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to do all of this for you, to shower you with His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, you turn away. Therefore, to bring in ourselves that soul, that spirit of hope, to stand because that spirit of hope give you that serenity, give you that peace inside, give you that strength. People outside, they do not have it. They don't have anything to hold on. They do not have anything, subhanAllah, to hold fast to. They do not have anything to refer to. You have Allah. When you have a problem, you run to your sujood and you'll be in sujood. You said, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. This is the first aspect that every believer needs to do. Then the next one, how can we truly, you know, by having the spirit who give you strength and firmness, you need to be firm into your relationship. Firm. We have here to implement the principle in the aqidah of al-wala' wal bara Al-wala' wal bara you have to be an alliance and friendship with who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined to be and to be innocent and clear yourself from those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you to be. There's people, they have weakness. It's a fact. We were studying some of the books, Al-Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, he said, you know, they told him, why you don't go see the, the, the Salatin, the rulers? He said, if I have a grudge toward the person and he meet me in the street and he greet me, Subhanallah, my heart softened toward this person. That grudge goes away. So he said, what do you think if I enter to visit one of these rulers and they walk on their, you know, comfy rags and they will offer me all these, you know, gifts? My heart will change and I will be seeing, I will be seeing their misdeeds, their ill deeds are good deeds. Therefore, this is the nature of us. If you know that yourself, you are weak, you have to make, subhanAllah, a gap between you and the people because with their word of kindness, with their word of, you know, with their, subhanAllah, campaign, because using the word of kindness is a strategy that always use it by people to gain and soften the heart of the people. So when you are 
dealing with these people who say, SubhanAllah, Allah, this person is so nice. What does it mean so nice? It mean accepted by Allah? You see, here, SubhanAllah, your perception, your fitrah started to be having like shake it, have some doubt in it. Which is mean, it does not mean these people, you know, whoever who's against the way of Allah, against your own morality, you deal with them when it comes to the contract, when it comes to work, when it comes to transaction, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, with fairness and justice. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and told us and taught us in Surah Al-Mumtahina. However, when it comes to the matter of your deen, the matter of your principle, if you know it's you're going to come close to this type of people, you're going to be like, hold off. I mean, I don't have the strength, really. My heart is very soft. If these people, they're going to tell me so better, I'm going to do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed me. And you know, subhanAllah, how awkward it is today. From all the debate, you know, to, from the, 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 the marriage of same gender, then the debate turned into genders. And people, subhanAllah, seeking to find what the gender suit them. In their essence, and they told them this is you created by something natural, so they're going to dig into themselves to find who I should be. And now, subhanAllah, the debate to see subhanAllah how it's going down and down into decadence is not gonna stop. And this is where you want to stand for yourself. Now is subhanAllah the big question what is a woman? Do your brother respect his sister? We are witnessing the lowest of the lowest in the level of the decadence in the past whole generations. And if you do not stand for yourself and for your family, you're going to be corrupted inside without knowing. That's why it's not about guidance. The guidance is here, but is the base of the guidance which is your inner nature. The inner nature. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when you have the spirit of hope, the spirit of optimism, standing and referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to do. If someone will address you from a way of harshness or from the way that is going to, you know, alter your principle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, tell them peace. This is, this is a line between me and you. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's been uh, learned to talk to his to, to his people and to talk to the community around him. He said, Say to the people who have given the book before you and those who are illiterate, did you accept Islam? If you accept Islam, this is the true guidance. If they turn away, what are you going to do? If they turn away, you stop there. You stop there. This is how you protect yourself. You have just to convey. Allah is watching. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, they are fully in, in a wrong way. And shikaq is like, subhanAllah, conflict. Conflict and differences that they will not be able to come out of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are in shikaq, then move away. In the other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching us how to have your might and pride of your deen. Many of us, they hiding their identity. They hiding their identity. Identity as being a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al kitab." O people of the book, come to one word. Together we worship only one Allah subhanahu wa one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do not take each other as gods. قَالَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوا If they turn away, what are you going to say? Then witness that I am a Muslim. Witness that we had spoken together, and witness that it come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya yeah, Allah, when I talk to him, he witnessed that I am a Muslim. And this is subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate that and boost into your heart the love of this deen which define who you are which give you that ability to get the bounty of Allah which give you that ability to be close to Allah which give you that ability to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if you corrupt our fitrah we lose the companionship of Allah we lose the safeguarding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu said when it comes to subhanallah it's very difficult because this invasion that we are living we live today in invasion, intellectual invasion, media invasion, as you see it in the whole social media, and materialistic invasion. If we do not protect ourselves, subhanAllah, we are weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayat, qala wa khuliqa al-insanu da'ifa. Man was created weak. It's our nature. We are vulnerable. So you have to take in consideration your nature. You're not mean person if someone, subhanAllah, say, I need to keep my distance with this person. He's an honest person in transaction, but he's follow another way. He's not going to help me. 
I know I am weak if I'm going to be friend with this person, he's going to influence me. We're not going to play, we are the influencer, we are the great people. No, keep your distance because you have one task to protect your inner nation. And when you come, subhanAllah, to the biggest of the difficulty, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet, قَالَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوا If they turn away from you, فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ Make this the holder, the keep that will, subhanAllah, keep safe your identity. حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ Allah is my sufficient. There is no God except Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, worthy to be worshipped. On whom, on Him, I put my reliance and trust. And He is Rabbul Arsh al Adim, the Lord of the mighty throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Ibrahim who said it when he was thrown in the fire. We are talking about big difficulties. He's not talking about talking, subhanAllah, to people. This is all of us, how to protect your inner nation. How to protect the fitrah that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, gifted to you. How to protect and keep innocent the fitrah that you were born with when you were a baby, that's what you had. You grow up, you're trying to protect it. As your parents help you to now, to be today in the masjid, say, make dua for your parents and for those close to you and your teacher and those around you who help you to be still today in the masjid. So you have, inshallah, that fitrah. Then strive, make jihad to truly keep that fitrah, not only define who you are, but they define also your relation between you and Allah. Because if you corrupt your fitra, you will be from those who forget Allah. And Allah is going to make you forget yourself. And the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way it was built and been revealed to us and taught to us and into the legacy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to always have hope. Hope, it does not stop. Optimism is, is a character in the believer, is a spirit in the believer. People, they do not have this. If you look at the uh, at the subhanAllah, the page of the CDC, and you see, I think, I'm not sure of the number, but you can review it, 12 million or more than 12 million adults, they seriously, seriously thought about, seriously were thinking about suicide. You have hope. Wherever you turn, there is hope. Why? Allah is the everlasting. Allah is always close to you. Allah is your wali. So don't lose this. This is your treasure. Optimism is, subhanAllah, embedded in the character of the believer. Therefore, this is what it gives you strength to celebrate who you are. You are a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Celebrate it and preserve your fitrah. In the battle of the Hud, at the first round when the believer, they were like defeated. They retreat themselves into, into the mountain. Abu Sufyan came to brag and show off and boast. He said, you know, Al-Harbu Sijal and so on. And then he started to say like a rajzu, like kind of a poem, chanting. يقول, أعلو هبل, أعلو هبل. High for Hubal. It's their God, their fake God, the idol that they have in, the, uh, in Mecca. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't you answer him? He said, what should we say, Ya Rasulullah? He said, قَالَ قُولُوا اللَّهُ أَعَزُّ وَأَجَلْ Allah, a'la wa ajal, higher, and he's the almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brother, this is a situation, someone is boasting that they, are, they defeated the Muslim at that time. What the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaches them is the firmness and to always keep, to not grieve, to not be sad if you are truly believed. La tahzanu, la tahinu, don't be weak. La tahzanu, don't be sad if you are truly believed. So in this situation, they were still defeated. But the might in the heart and the strength that the Prophet Sallallahu teaching them. And then he said, قَالَ إِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لَنَا وَلَا عِزَّةَ لَكُمْ We have the pride and the might and the honor and you don't have nothing. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, don't you going to answer him? He said, what we should say, Ya Rasulullah? He said, tell them, tell him, اللَّهُ مَوْلَانَا وَلَا مَوْلَا لَكُمْ 
Allah is our Mawla. Allah is our safeguard, our guardian. Allah is our helper. Allah is our protector. And you don't have none. Dear brother, respect your sister, this the Izzah embedded into the life and the heart of the believer who make them in Ghazwa to have after two days or less than two days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory because they said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal waki. This is how the way how to protect ourselves, protect our children, protect our generation, to really make a line. Make a line. If you know yourself weak, your heart soft, you have to stop. You cannot have a friends that they're going to influence you. You're not going to have friends that are going to shake your heart. How many people, they will be, subhanAllah, there's a lady, many of you that you know, she was like devoted all her life in India. All of you know who I'm talking about. Devoted her whole life in India, feeding and working and adhering to another faith. People, even Muslims, they will be like, subhanAllah, questionable and confused. They said, this person is going to help fire. Why? Because she's doing good. The balance of Allah is different than your balance. Why? Because we are soft. If you know yourself, take your distance. You have one objective, is to keep innocent, clear, and free, and sincere your own fitra, your own inner nature that you need. If it's corrupted, dear brother, respected sister, in the next generation or the next years, you're going to be voting and you're going to be supporting and helping people who really conflict and fight Allah with sins. Why? Because it's going to seem to you it's like okay. No, it's not okay. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, therefore let's together, in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect our inner nature to be able to protect the fitrah of our kids. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordaining us to do. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be on the path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to protect as our guidance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala alaykum anfusakum. Be careful. Take care of yourself. Nobody can meet, lead you astray. As long as you hold on the guidance. Qala alaykum anfusakum. Lay yadurrukum man dhalla idha htadaytum. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and accept us and give us the firmness. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana ajma'een. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'a. Wa arina al-batila batila warzuqna ajtinaba. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Waqina adhaba al-nar. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqimu salata wa ilhamukumullah.